So in order to do a factory reset on these, turn on the radio, uh, press and hold the info button and it will pop up and say full scan. Then you uh, use the up and down arrow keys to select uh, system and press the select button. Then you get the option to change time, sleep, backlight, factory reset, select factory reset. It says factory reset, no or yes. And then you say yes please and it says a restarting. And as soon as it's restarted, what we should do now is turn the radio on and the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna run some scans in order to pick up as many DAB stations as it possibly can. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. Today, <laughs> we have to fix the incredible farting Sainsbury's DAB radio. This is quite literally a 35 quid radio it's manufactured in China and sold by Sainsbury's, John Sainsbury's, which is a UK supermarket. So the audio amp on this device has a horrible tendency to burst into oscillation. What we're going to have to do is, <laughs> is get in here, identify the audio amp, which is clearly this big heatsink right here and um, replace the capacitors on the PCB. And there's a couple of PCBs in here. One is a control switch PCB, which is on the front, which basically looks after all the push buttons and all of the, and all of the LEDs that are on the front of the unit. And, uh, and the LCD display, which is a little backlit LCD display. And then there's this PCB right here. And this guy, as you can see, is connected to the battery compartment. Um, it's also connected to the antenna. And this little chap right here, this is the DAB receiver. So anyway, when you turn it on, it quite literally goes like that. Um, sounds like a Harley Davidson driving by. Now, let's get in here and replace these capacitors. I'm going to have to put my glasses on for this. Great news, I've got bags of capacitors here that we can fix this with. Right, glasses on. And what have we got? So, 220 microfarad 10 volts. A so there's a, a battery connector here that's just been wired straight into the PCB. So that's uh, that's not going to be very useful for us, is it? Let me tugging on the cable, hoping that it will come away, but it won't, clearly. Ah, you know what? Yeah, we can give ourselves access. There's a couple of cables here that we can pull off. There's the speakers cable. There we go. And we can get the main body away from the PCB now, so that's good. Right, now we've got access to the PCB. So we can see what's going on with a little bit more, a little bit more detail. And this is the audio amp here. This big chip, turning on the TS100 soldering iron. Nice little detailed soldering iron to do this job. And uh, yeah, a little bit of solder, and as I say, some uh, some capacitors. So what we've got here then is we have a uh, a lovely uh, low. ESR um, jack on capacitor, so that's the 22, so that's going to be quite big, but it'll still fit on the PCB. And all of these capacitors are now overrated, uh, so they'll handle things much better. Uh, understandably, uh, the Chinese want to make as much profit as they possibly can from this lovely little radio, and considering it sells for £35, that's actually not bad at all. Uh, so what we're going to do is just pop the old glasses back on again. Right, let's just turn up the, the heat on the iron. 300 degrees is never quite enough. It always needs to be about 350 or 360, something along those lines. And one thing I should probably do is put is just tin the tip. So uh, there we go. Just tinning up the tip. And let's get... Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> okay, I can see the solder melting now. 
And all I do is I put a little bit of pressure on the component with my finger and thumb from the back of the uh, PCB side. So from the rear side of the PCB, I just put a little bit of pressure on the component and then just very gently, very carefully wiggle that component out of its location. And as you can see, bonk, there it is. And because it's a large capacitor, they've glued it in. And the great news on the PCB, it's clearly marked up which way around these capacitors are meant to be. So we're going to go ahead and chuck in here a low ESR capacitator. And we'll make sure that we get the polarity the correct way around. It's highly likely that um, I haven't got a hole on the other side of the PCB right now. So I'm just going to, there we go. Just going to give that a little bit of uh, encouragement by warming it up. And then we can uh, create our own little hole. Happy days. And the second leg going in place now. Oops, was. There you go. Second leg going in. And uh, warm the PCB up there. So that second leg should just push. Whoops. If I actually get it in the hole. Uh, come on. And that second leg should just go ahead and push through the center. There we go. Just seeing it pop through there. So now what we can do is just very carefully wiggle that capacitor back into place. This would all be so much better if I uh, if I had a decent solder sucker, wouldn't it really? Uh, certainly there'd be a lot less risk of me uh, raising one of the um, one of the pads on the on the PCB here. But uh, Anyway, I'm quite used to doing it this way, so we really shouldn't have a problem. In fact, that's looking quite pretty in there, isn't it? Look at that. There we go. So uh, let's get that welded in place with a little bit more solder. Lovely. And not the lead-free type, clearly. Do -do -do. Lovely jubbly, lovely jubbly Del boy. And then what we can do is just clip those leads and um, there's a little bit of uh, greyness to that solder joint there and the reason behind that I'm pretty sure is because it's got lead free solder on the PCB. Yeah it has so um, not a lot you can do about that. But uh, anyway, there we go, first capacitor in place. And we just gotta do the rest of them. So I'll probably high speed this one for you. You see me replace a capacitor. And ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. The very last capacitor installed. So, right, let's just have a bit of a clean up there. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. Nicely over specced. And um, yeah, these, uh, <laughs> there we go, that's the old ones there. They're quite small and, and fiddly. These guys will certainly. Um, they, they won't improve the uh, the audio quality because the speakers on here are just rubbish if I'm completely honest with you but um, it'll certainly help the longevity of this device so all that said then let's uh, get this guy connect it all back up and see if that farting noise has gone away so PCB lives in there, we can just screw, it slides into these two, it's quite interesting the design really, because it literally it just slides into uh, into these two, into a plastic sort of, um, a plastic bracket here, and then they just use these rather large headed screws just to secure that in place. So we'll get those two big headed screws in there. And for those of you that uh, are interested in the model number of this device, 
It is a SKU 12860961. Yes, indeed. And um, yeah, the six volt input. Uh, the power supplies have a tendency to go on these. I've noticed that uh, quite a lot of people are replacing power supplies on these guys. So I think the um, they went a bit cheap on the power supply side of things. Just plugging in the uh, connectors for the speakers and for the control interface on the front. Let's turn it around. Let's pop two screws in. I never put too many screws in because you nearly always find yourself having to take them out again because you've forgotten to do something. Or, so there's no point, <laughs> in my most humble opinion, there's very little point of ever having to uh, put multiple screws in. And plug in the power. Ta -da! Turn it on. And I wonder what happens. Well, it didn't go. Tell you what we will do while we've got it here in front of us. We will do a full factory reset. So in order to do a factory reset on these, turn on the radio, uh, press and hold the info button, and it will pop up and say full scan. Then you uh, use the up and down arrow keys to select uh, system and press the select button. And you get the option to change time, sleep, backlight, factory reset, select factory reset. It says factory reset, no or yes. And then you say yes, please. And it says a restarting. And as soon as it's restarted, what we should do now is turn the radio on. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to run some scans in order to pick up as many DAB stations as it possibly can. Anyway, ladies and gents, thanks ever so much for watching Dubious Engineering. I hope this has been slightly useful to you. I'm really happy that we got these horrible little capacitors out of there. Um, and I'm pretty sure that... Uh, that the audio amp on this thing isn't going to burst into oscillation anymore. So, uh, Peter, I hope your neighbour will be very happy with this fix. Ladies and gents, take care. Have a wonderful week and weekend. Cheers and beers, everybody. Bye for now. 675 million US dollars. 675 million US dollars is a lot of money.